Hey guys, so in this video we are going to talk about custom field formats. So let's get into it. Basically what we're going to cover is how we can store form field data that is custom. And I'll touch on what I mean by that. How this helps us express more complex data formats and when we want to use a custom field, some custom field data. So let's just walk through this together. So you may have noticed that when you are declaring a field of some sort, you usually are limited to the base types of the HTML standard. Now, an example of this would be, let's say that we have this sort of application here. This is just a little React application that I've created. Let's actually look at the application first. So we have like a visual representation. This is my form. All it's gonna take is a username and age and some income and some taxes and whatever this is. But let's start with the username and the age. So if we have a look at my main application file here, you, the, all of this we are gonna cover in just a moment. But Basically what I've done here, and this is very common if you're working in something like React, and this doesn't have to just be React, guys. I want you to know that this thing here that I'm doing, is it applies to everything pretty much. It's just the way that HTML was designed, and I'm just doing it in React as an example. So you might have a text field and you might have a number field to represent the username and the age. So let's have a look at that. Under the hood, all, of, um, all I'm doing here is that I'm passing in some props to my input element and I have a type of text. And for my number field, as you might expect, I have a type of number. It's the same deal, right? Now, this is all well and good, but you probably have noticed that at some, in some situations, this is just not good enough because you want to express a more complicated data structure than what you can in the native input elements. An example is very commonly that you need to express the concept of money. Now, how do you express money in this situation? Because if you just give it a number, well, there are many ways that you could do this, but technically a money value has two things. It has a amount and a unit or a currency of some sort. So how are you going to capture that information? Well, there are many ways to solve this problem and some of them include using special names or just having some type of knowledge on this in the in the code where oh, you know that oh this user is always going to use this currency or that currency because they're on a specific URL or something like that. There are many ways. I, I'm just going to show you a way that I have found to be extremely flexible and works very, very well with uh, when you want to express custom data types where in an input field. So let's have a look at my other input fields here. So let's take a look at this one here. So I have something called a money field. Now, what is that? Well, a money field is just this. It is a wrapper that internally takes care of the currency unit. So you'll notice here that I am in the props passing in the name and a currency and then a placeholder. So what basically is happening here is that I am under the hood hiding two input fields in order to express what it is that I want. So I'm in the first scenario, the number is going to hold the actual value of the amount of money that I want to place, right? And then I use a, well, just a state in order to set the value. And the value is just going to be a string in this scenario. I could format this as a JSON. I could, you know, colon separate it or comma separate it. It doesn't really matter how I do it. I just need to store the the this string that represents a value of money, which contains these two parts. And then I have a hidden input field that is actually going to contain the name and the value. And then I have this cost custom property called data.field type with a type of money, money field. We're gonna to touch on that in a moment, but the most important thing is that you see this part here. So notice that the input of the number doesn't have a name. So when I submit my form, What's actually gonna happen is that this is of course going to be sent, but what I'm interested in is this field here because this field is holding the, inf the information, the finished money value, whereas this field is only going to showcase the number to the user. Now you could use this field for the same exact same purpose, but then you would have to do some fancy logic with like rewriting the text in the input field. Like as an example, you'll notice here that I can just input a number here, but if I had to express it in some other fashion with say a currency, it would have the, I would have to have some type of 
blur effect or something like that that would increase in that, that would append or prefix the uh, the income string with whatever currency that I'm actually using right so upon submission what's going to happen is that it's going to go let's take a look here where is my it is up here yeah so on submit I'm basically basically going to call this function here which is going to which is called parse form basically and it's going to take all the field names that I have declared. Now notice that this is how I declared my money field. So I have a connection here. So there's a field name that is called income and I'm going to parse out all of this data and then I'm gonna do some conversion or something like that. But that's the thing that I want you to really, really get away from this is that I am simply extracting a hidden value that contains the currency and the value that the user has inputted in order to express a more complicated data format than I could have if I were to put everything into the number or if everything was just a number. Now, we can expand upon this. Let's take this one further and let's say that we have something even more flexible than something where I place the currency. Let's take a look at this element here. So here I have something called taxes and for some reason this form allows me to input some number here and then I can say if that is a percent or if it's a currency or if it's a gram of gold for reasons, don't ask me why, that's how we just roll here in Sweden. And this is also a fairly sophisticated data type. But it's also very flexible because, as you said, as you saw, I could basically specify the, va the value, the, I could set any value and I could change the unit to whatever I wanted. And the same thing applies here. I'm simply creating a wrapper where I input a set of units that you can pick from, together with name and placeholder, of course. And then I have this thing here where I wrap everything in a div and then I have an input and a select box. And the input is just responsible for setting the value. And the select allows me to select which of these units, I'm just mapping out all the options here and options and showing a display name so that the user can see some type of name. And then there's an on change up here that is just going to go and find the correct value that was selected and set that in my React state. So I have a value and a unit and then I do the same thing as I did in the previous example that was a little bit simpler. I simply set the value to of this hidden field, like the name here, and then I set the value and the unit to the value of the input. And I also use this field type, this custom field type. We're gonna, as I said, we're gonna touch on that in just a moment. But I hope that this makes sense to you. So I have created a input field where I can pretty much allow the user to select any value and any unit. And this is much more custom and well, it's going to scale very well because I don't have to create some, weird business logic or something where I have some type of global variable or I have a URL that I know that, oh, if it's uh, slash US, it's in going to be dollars. If it's slash DK, it's going to be Danish crowns or like whatever, right? This allows me to very, in a very flexible manner, specify what the units are going to be and what the value is going to be. And it's all encapsulated in one single component. And here you can see that, let's take a look here. And these are just my options that I passed in. So as you can see here, I'm basically just giving it the name, the units and whatever the placeholder is going to be. And here are my units. I could expand this. I could remove, a, I can remove things and I can add things. It doesn't really matter, right? So it's very flexible. Now, finally, what is this parse form thing? Let's have a look at that. So I have this concept of different field types. Now, the reason why I want this is more because of a nice to have this. You don't have to do this, but I think this is a very nice thing to, to work with when you're dealing with TypeScript and you're dealing with, well, just in general data types that you, where you want to know what the shape of the data is going to be. So here I've created a few custom types. I've created a value unit and a money unit or an interface for these two things basically. And then I have something called a form data value, which is just going to contain all of the different types of values that I can find in the fields that I have in my system. And then I have some interface called form data, which is just going to be, it's going to be a transient type or an intermediate construct, construct where I have like just a value name, like a name of the, the name of the field that is going to map to one of these types. 
task. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to take the field names in my form and then the form object, which is just going to be any in this case because I don't know what's going to be on the form. And then I'm just going to reduce over all of these names and then I'm going to extract each field. I'm just going to type check it and make sure that, you know, that I actually have a field here. Then I'm going to convert the, uh, the field, uh, I'm going to extract the field data type, which is that property that you saw earlier. And this is going to be important in just a moment. So now I have the type of field and I have the field. So now I call the get value function. And then finally, when I have my value, I set it on my form data and I return the form data. And here is my little get value function. And all it does is that it takes a field type and a field that could be anything. Well, it doesn't have a specific type. And then it just checks which type it is. And then it knows how to convert that field into the format that I want it to be when I work with it in JavaScript. So in the money case, I know that all right, this is just going to be a space delimited string where the first part is going to be the value and the second part is going to be the unit. And I want that to be in the shape of an amount. So I parse the amount into a float and the other part is going to be a currency. That's pretty much it really. And the same thing goes for the value unit field. So this allows me to express very complicated data structures that I can convert into very easily into JSON. I could, as I've said before, also have just kept this as JSON and done JSON.parse on the value. It's up to you how you kind of want to deal with this, right? And then finally, when I've done the parsing, I get back some raw data, which is just going to be the form data, which is, as I was saying, it's just a, it's just an interface where there's a bunch of unknown string values that map to a data form value, which is going to be one of those types, right? And then I have a few type guard functions that is going to convert these values into the property, the, into the values that I want them to be. So I know here that my data, if I grab the username, I can convert that safely into a string. And here are my type guards. So I have an as string function that just converts any value into a string or validates that it is a string. Otherwise, we're going to throw an error. We have the same thing for a number, value unit and money values. And what I'm then left with is this very nice form data type that basically complies to this interface, which is the typed version of my form data in, in its finished state, basically. So I hope this makes sense to you. Why I, I, all I'm doing here is that I'm creating a way for me to go from a unknown data structure, an untyped data structure, which is the form that I get from, from the DOM, to my own representation of it, which is this form data that is typed and is very safe to use in TypeScript. I just need to make sure that I'm actually doing this in the correct fashion, because basically, the if if I'm if I'm not converting this in the correct fashion, this is doing since this is doing runtime checks. I might actually be lying to myself. Username might be something else if I'm not if I haven't written this function in the correct manner. But what I'm now left with is this so i can say something like foobar which is this and then some stuff and then i can just submit that and what i get logged out is this a finished data structure where i have a username and age an income and some taxes and all of these these values are just as part of a normal regular form but it's very easy for me to create custom data types that are more complicated than just a string or just a number so what i want you to take away from this is that by leveraging the something like a hidden input field or some uh, similar sorts of things and having some type of custom attribute added to a form field such as what we did here with the money field, it's very easy that when you know, to figure out how to extract a custom data type from, uh, from an input field. Because all you're doing is that you're setting a hidden value that is not user facing on a hidden, a hidden f input field. And then upon submission, you just check which type it is. And then you need some type of function that knows how to parse that data into the type that you want in your JavaScript. And by doing this, you can create very cool custom fields that can represent custom data types that is not natively supported by the browser. I hope this was useful. Have a great day.